I, I look back at early 2020 and I kind of slept on DeFi in the beginning of the year. And what yeah. started happening is you start having these projects that would pop up like compound, um, you know, it just kind of just zoomed out of nowhere and you're like, Oh, I missed it. And then what happened? It, it just kept going and it kept going and all the DeFi projects just kept going. Um, Ave, obviously yep. another one, like 68,000% or something like that returns, like insane returns. And so you started like catching wind that, Oh man, this is a popular, this is bubbling but you felt like you missed it, but then it just kept going for like six more months. And that's kind of, I, I think we're right at that jump point right now. Dude, and you talk about DeFi coins pumping. Uh, I was looking at DeFi Pulse Index because that's basically like an index fund mm. of the top DeFi projects, which yeah. makes sense because traditional investing, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, but uh, it's hard to beat just an S&P index fund. And this looks like a DeFi index fund. Yeah, and a lot of times, like with NFTs, like Forrest did some digging on this, coin audius symbol audio and what i'm Love seeing it. with this nft phenomenon like video audio art and i feel like the next evolution of this nft thing is going to just totally disrupt like you know the googles the itunes Mm. and all these music streaming services because oh, yeah. the music services are going to get into video. The music and the video guys are going to get into art. And then the next thing you know, you're going to have big artists coming in, you know, buying these tokens so that they can participate on the platform. Mm -hmm. Consumers buying the tokens to get better access and also supporting their favorite artists. And when you start to hear the value propositions of these coins in this whole space, you start to go, you know, this sounds somewhat familiar, except there's no big brother Silicon Valley player in the yeah. middle. And I'm like, well, no wonder this stuff is rocketing. It's not just the, not, it may not just be just the hot crypto thing at the moment. It may be a disruption of Silicon Valley. And we're even looking at stuff that could disrupt Wall Street. So this, like, what can, what can crypto disrupt theme may be what's next. Yeah, super bullish on Audius. The the token is audio, um, and it's a decentralized music streaming platform. And I think it has phenomenal potential for a lot of reasons. But the big the big reason is that it's pulling in non crypto people. So these mm -hmm. projects that can go and pull in non crypto people, like Chili's, Theta TV. You go to Theta.tv and you're on a video streaming platform. Half the people there don't even realize that it's built on blockchain rails. Yeah. Right. Uh, Audius, same thing. Decentralized music streaming, 90% of the revenue is going to the artist. 10% is going to the node, the, the node operators, right? With Spotify, it's like, I, I think the, there's been like multiple songs on Spotify, big, like number one hits with hundreds of millions of view, uh, plays and the artists make like 9,000 bucks off of it. Huge issue that they're solving. So very bullish on Audius. Mm. Yeah, I think I, I think music is definitely going to be uh, a, a disruptive force or it's going to be disrupted by NFTs. And, you know, N NFTs are not just, you know, for collectibles and even songs. Like, There's so many more use cases like we're just breaking into like what's out there beyond collectibles. But the collectibles are getting super hot and it's it is becoming very, very, very apparent that i mean this is the gateway of the mainstream you know like it's so funny right like out of everything we've done over these last years like we made videos on like oh this could be the thing to bring the people in it's a bunch of freaking trading cards <laughs> you know like that's that's what's getting them in and they're so excited you see mark cuban and logan paul and uh you know gary, gary vaynerchuk, vaynerchuk. Like, yeah. gary v he knows what's right. up you know he, he knows what's up for sure uh hopefully gonna get him on the channel here pretty soon and he oh. He loves attention. And he knows where attention goes. I mean, we're building our company kind of, you know, on a lot of his models. And if he's Tell him I said hi. Yeah, I when, will. You, when you get him. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Higher <laughs> fee. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the fact is, is that he knows what's next. Uh, I know you guys probably know. I mean, some of you guys probably know. Like, I have a really big TikTok account. I've been big on TikTok for a long time. And I was leading the curve on that. And I was watching Gary Vaynerchuk also talk about how big TikTok was. And it was like a great kind of like... Uh, uh, validation with what I had been telling everybody and now to see what's going on with NFTs and he's on that same tip. I mean, and you look at, I mean, there's so many good projects right now in this space. Like you got Chili's obviously, which could end up being the leader in the space and you have Ecomi and then you have Eternity chain. There's another one coming out. that's not even out yet. 
uh, Eureka, that's U-R-E-E-Q-A. That's another one people are super excited about. Um, and you just got so many different use cases going on for these that, I mean, I think the next three months are going to be like super fascinating. And we could see Bitcoin kind of like top out at some point if it hasn't already. And this may be the altcoin super cycle going straight into NFTs. Dude, and Chili's is one that was on token metrics for a while before it, was. it blew yeah. up. I and I was doing the videos about the top coins on token metrics and Chili's was up there. And I was like, how yep. is this going to really actually do anything? And then the team's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. I, had, I had a great position on that that I sold out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 19 year, 19 year olds and 18 year olds, they're not going to want a portfolio of stocks. No. They're going to want they're going to want a portfolio right. of Those. NFTs that they think are going to rise in value over time. Yeah. So these NFTs are not just, you know, to maybe my generation and they're like, Hey, cool cartoons and baseball cards, et cetera. But they're going to be like securities to young people investments. Right. And then if you consider that as a phenomenon, you know, that has, that's, that's like disrupting Silicon Valley and wall street at the same time. Hey Ben. So, you were, you were pretty early on NFTs, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Boy, NFTs, how's that doing? Yeah, so we've got a, so much going on with NFTs. We actually just hired somebody full-time to come up and run our NFT department. We've got, uh, we were very early on Rarible. We were the number one seller on Rarible for a very long time over the summer. We made some BitBoy comic collectible cards, and then we were doing a comic book, and uh, all that was going really well, but we're just not really like that happy with uh the Rarible platform, Rarible community, they didn't seem to really want us there. So uh, we're in the process right now of moving off. We have a, uh, a BitBoy card series coming out on Wax. It's going to be a really big Wax launch. I think it's in about two weeks. Uh, and then from there, uh, actually having some conversations with Tops. You guys know Tops does uh, the Garbage Pail Kids uh, on, uh, on Wax as well. And they're really, really, really big on NFTs right now. This is a big focus for them. And so we're talking to them about like gamifying our NFTs to be an actual like playable deck builder game uh, virtually. And of course, we're going to be sending out like physical, you know, cards as well, where they can be playable, you know, both ways. So we got that going on. Then we've got another launch we're going to be doing with Theta here in a little bit. And then I can't say too much, but we've actually had some talks with some very like, I'll just say in a roundabout way, some major top like tier one athletes about doing NFTs for them. Um, so that would be a little bit later on the road. We're, we're really exploring now, like we, we made money in NFTs, but I mean, we think what we have has value as well, but really we're, we want to get kind of focused right now on, on helping the mainstream influencer athlete celebrity to be able to launch their own NFTs, uh, you know, because they're looking in there being like, wow, NBA sure is making a lot of money off our likeness. Um, they, you know, and the athletes themselves want to get a little piece of that and they've got fans. And when you think about us in crypto, right, if we make NFTs and we were to, you know, send that out to our community, community is going to go, they're going to support us and stuff. But I mean, uh, imagine if you had like Tom Brady who wanted to put it on an NFT, all he's got to do is just go to Instagram, put up a link and they're sold out in one minute. So, yep. right. um, you know, the, the, and a lot of people, they get really like, you know, they're iffy about, is this a bubble? Is NFT or NFT is going to pop? And I just think like eventually all that's the market's going to correct itself. NFTs are here to stay, period. It's funny you say that. I was going to say, it's funny you say that because I have some people reaching out to me as well to create NFTs, influencers with like large amounts of followers, like um, definitely showing interest because I feel like before you'd have to sell merchandise, right? There would be something you'd have to sell to get uh, your audience monetized because basically the, the platforms take advantage of you, right? A lot of social platforms. Right. So I've been getting a lot of interest in that as well. Now that you say that um, it actually kind of aligns with what I'm thinking about NSTs and what we were talking about a little bit earlier, how we can potentially see it become, you know, as big as DeFi. Right. So yeah. we're very early on. Um, and I really do think that the social currency that these people have been amassing for very long periods of time, um, you know, they kind of deserve this. Right. It's like kind of like something that cryptocurrency has brought to them uh, the same way it's brought freedom to us with finances. Right. So yeah, I have a lot of hopes for NFTs as well. I've been diving really into Now, do you guys it. think NFTs will, will be bigger than DeFi? It, it's technically part of DeFi, I think. Yeah. So I, I, I think it can't be larger than DeFi, but I think, I, like, sorry, I'm not trying to talk the whole time. I just mean, like, it, I think it's going to be as hot as DeFi was last year. Like, that's what I'll say. Right. I think the only time you have to worry about NFTs 
is if people start using it as collateral to like borrow money. So if you're like getting three X levered off your Pokemon cards, <laughs> you know, that, that, that could smell a little bit like 2008, but I think we're kind of yeah. far away from that. Right. As far, we'll as, get there. as, far as I'm concerned, we'll if anybody wants to make an NFT of me, I am down. <laughs> yeah. I think one thing to keep in mind is, is the, there's going to be a flood potentially of NFTs and how do you separate the good NFTs that are going to rise in value versus the NFTs that are like Beanie Baby? Remember when everyone collected Beanie Babies? And I remember seeing videos of people in divorce court separating their Beanie Babies out because they the thought meme. they were going to be worth <laughs> millions one day, right? So, you know, just because mm -hmm. something's an NFT, does it carry value? Well, in this bubble, maybe, uh, but down the road, once the market sorts itself out, it'll be interesting to find to, to see what actually makes an NFT valuable. Well, is there a way to invest in the growth of NFTs without buying individual NFTs? Is that by buying the platforms or what? Buying the crypto. Sure. The, the coins. I would say Flow. Flow blockchain is the best NFT project out there, in our, in our opinion. So I think getting that is probably the best way to get exposure to NFTs without having to own actual NFTs. Yeah. Well, because I, I think that, and this was something I was going to you know, say a little bit earlier, is that you have two totally different, you know, kind of use cases going on here. You have, like Bill was talking about, you're going to have these investors that are, you know, going to want to have these in their portfolio. You know, you were saying, well, you know, they don't want stocks, but they would want, you know, uh, NFTs in their portfolios. But also, you know, you're going to have people that want them because this is going to become, I said, I think they're like going to be the new tattoos, you know, like tattoos are phasing their way out, guys. I'm telling you, everybody, every kid born today, both their parents, you know, are covered with tattoos. I was watching the NBA All-Star a couple game a couple weeks ago, uh, and I was like, I cannot believe this is the first time I watched the NBA All-Star game in years and years and years. And like every player doesn't have full sleeves. Like they used to have full sleeves all the time, right? Tattoos have been kind of the way that people have, have, uh, you know, and whether it's dyeing your hair, whatever it is, like show your individuality. But I think that now the NFTs that you have are going to be a way that you're going to be able to show your personality to people. You're, you know, oh, I'm instead of getting like a Lakers tattoo, you go and you get a Lakers special edition NFT from NBA Top Shots. And kids are going to be carrying these around as like a sticker portfolio, yeah. not just, and it's of course mobile, it's going to be on their phone. So that's kind of the way I see it. Like, that's what really the untapped potential here is. It's not just us on the crypto side, like wanting to invest in things and to make money. It's got that use case, but then it's also got the individuality, you know, kind of aspect to it that, look, the kids love this stuff. There's no question about it. That's why this stuff's getting popular. Right. And on the subject of kids loving it, right? The, the next game with NFTs might be like comic books. Like, yes. what can you buy? What can you buy for a dollar? that's going to moon and go to a hundred. Yeah. And we may be looking at, you know, NFT projects that can moon. And then six months from now, you may actually be combing and looking for low cap artists yeah. that come out of nowhere. Like almost being like, how, you're going to have to be like a music and an art critic to, to make money in the NFT game itself. Can't wait till these NFL ones come out. They're going to be sweet. Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com.